In 1999, Red Hot Chili Peppers released what some would consider was their comeback album with Californication. After dominating the 90s with 1991's Blood Sugar Sex Magic, the band toured the world, they were all over MTV, and they blew up in a major way, but they would also be hit by internal strife. Guitarist John Frusciante would depart the group in 1992, and I've done a whole video on his departure. The link is down below. Following his departure, the band went through several more guitarists and released the underwhelming record 1995's One Hot Minute. By 1999, Frusciante was back with the band, and the Chili Peppers were on top once again. Californication would sell over 14 million copies worldwide and got a Grammy nomination for Best Rock Album. Eight years after their so-called comeback album, the television network Showtime premiered a new show starring actor David Duchovny of the X-Files fame, who played a novelist. Set in Los Angeles, the show focused on the seedy side of the city, including sex, drugs, and rock and roll, something the Chili Peppers were familiar with. The show is sprinkled with numerous rock and roll references and cameos. Henry Rollins guest starred in the first season, and Duchovny's character wrote several novels which happened to be named after Slayer albums. The Chili Peppers soon slapped the show with a lawsuit. But what happened? Stay tuned to find out. Several months after Californication premiered in the summer of 2007 on Showtime, the Red Hot Chili Peppers filed a lawsuit against Showtime Networks, show creators and executive producer Tom Kapanos, as well as two production companies. The band claimed that the TV show name caused confusion. The aim of the legal action was to get the show to change its name and pay the band an undisclosed amount of money. Of course, Showtime didn't approach the band to use the title in the first place because generally bands do not own the title or names of their albums and songs. Not only did the Chili Peppers take issue with the name of the show, but actress Rachel Miner, who played a secretary named Danny California, which is the name of a Chili Pepper song found on their 2006 album, Stadium Arcadium, as well as a character who's been referenced on several of the group's other songs as well. It would be ironic that the Chili Pepper song Danny California was accused by some of ripping off the Tom Petty song Mary Jane's Last Dance, which came out 13 years prior. Both songs were produced by Rick Rubin, and interestingly enough, I've done a whole video on the similarity. The link is down below. Getting back to the story, the Chili Peppers lawsuit alleged unfair competition, dilution of the value of the name, and unjust enrichment, with frontman Anthony Kiedis claiming that the title is, and I quote, inherently distinctive, famous, and immediately associated in the mind of the consumer. For some TV show to come along and steal our identity is not right. The lawsuit also claimed that at the time if people searched iTunes using the word Californication, the store retrieved the band's music and the TV show's compilation albums. So where did the show's title even come from? Well, according to the show's creator Tom Kapanos, he claimed he first heard the word Californication in reference to the state of Oregon. According to the Associated Press, Kapanos claimed, and I quote, Apparently in the 70s there was a bumper sticker that said don't Californicate Oregon because Californians were coming up there and I just thought it was a great, great title for a show. Looking at what's going on now with people leaving California in droves for other states like Nevada and Texas, and given that my brother lives in Houston, I've heard similar things being thrown around these days. Showtime would claim that the band never created the term pointing to a Time magazine issue in 1972 with the headline The Great Californicated West. And the Canadian band The Rio Statics also released an album called Whale Music in 1992 with a song called California Dreamline, and in that song the word Californication appears in the lyrics. You may be wondering, so can bands actually trademark their albums or songs? So a general rule is that names or titles can't be protected as trademarks, but there are exceptions. The Chili Peppers could have claimed the name was synonymous with the band, and they could have possibly gotten a trademark. A lot of the times bands and artists don't normally trademark albums or song names because it costs money and it can be a lengthy process. That was the case for the term Californication. Had the Chili Peppers successfully trademarked the name, there never would have been a dispute in the first place. And it's likely that Showtime would have seen the trademark and opted to call the show something else or just simply negotiate a deal. What's funny is that in 2007, Showtime did file a trademark application for the show's title, but it wasn't clear whether it was actually registered or not. According to a 2011 article in the Hollywood news site The Wrap, it claimed that the lawsuit was quietly settled out of court, but the show was still on the air for seven seasons and never underwent a name change. According to a lawyer named Kim Walker who was interviewed about the lawsuit and who deals with intellectual property, 
She would talk about the case saying, successful songs, albums, and movies can become brands in themselves. What's really surprising is how few songs and albums are properly protected. The Chili Peppers made the word famous, but it doesn't automatically follow that they can stop its use in a TV show. Even if you search Rolling Stone's top 10 albums, none of the titles are registered in the US as trademarks by bands. For example, Sgt. Pepper's is number one on Rolling Stone's list, but it's not been trademarked by the Beatles. Instead, it's been registered as a footwear brand by a company in Spain and by a pepper spray brand in the US. The only notable musician who comes to mind who's registered a trademark was David Bowie, who registered Ziggy Stardust. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again tomorrow on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.